only give us our identity it also has a spiritual physical economic social implications why do people wear their hair the way they do what informs the choice of color length and even the general style these are some of the questions we'll be answering on today's show it is all about hair all perspective all angles and it is we can deal coming to you from the network service of the NTA. My name is Patience Eloy Abba, and I am delighted to be here. And I know one more person who is equally as delighted, Thelma. Hello, Patience. Great to see you as always. <laughs> Meanwhile, your hair is most amazing. Thank you, girl. <laughs> and that's why we often say that the hair is your crowning glory. But in times past, we thought it was just for the women in these days. As we'll come to learn in our package today, for men, their hair is a work of art. And would you believe that when the barber starts to put uh, hairstyles into clear perspectives and angles, he's building artistry exemplary dimensions and ensuring that that man or that woman stands out wherever they go. Welcome to Weekend Deal. I'm Thelma Obazi. You are watching Weekend Deal and we're talking today about your hair, how to make it more fantastic, how to make it more durable, how to make it beautiful, how to make you outstanding. In our background feature, as usual, Francis does research. He's been unrelenting all through the week because he knows that everyone wants to stand out. As he chats with Dami Lola Egbeja, we get to learn that managing natural hair can come with some steep prices, but if you are determined, you will get it right. Over the years, natural hair has been um, described as hair without perm, without relaxer, because of, will I call it the modernization of styling in fashion, women started falling in love with a permed version of their hair over the natural hair but eventually there was a shift in the fashion industry where the natural hair came back in vogue again people realized that uh, chemicals were causing a lot of damage to their hair and then we started focusing on just rocking our natural hair all over again actually it's the natural hair that is more expensive to maintain natural hair products are quite pricey but when your hair is permed all you have to worry about is relaxers but for natural hair you have to think of shea butter leave-in conditioners shampoo and all of that cost implication i think it's almost about the same thing at the end of the day usually we have dandruff that's for the scalp usually we have hair breakage maybe due to um, introduction of new products maybe somebody is changing their products or even pregnancy pregnancy can cause hair loss childbirth can cause hair loss we also have natural defects like alopecia where you have loss of um chunk part of your hair over the years for the problem we have a lot we've had people who tell you that they never used to have itchy scalp but then because of introduction of relaxers it has happened we've had people that said relaxers changed the color of their hair maybe their hair used to be fuller it changed the density of the hair i think on the long run permed hair has a lot of side effects because of the ash chemicals being introduced to the body braids is not just something basic 
every breed style brings out a work of art you know in fact you can't be a breeder if you don't understand that this thing must come out beautiful i think one of the people that actually appreciates it is the fulani people and maybe the northerners in nigeria and some very parts of africa too they do not joke with the artistry of the braids when you talk about dreadlocks being dada in the west it's actually not every yoruba person that likes or believes in it it's actually restricted to the white garment church and dada is not dreadlocks dada is a child's um, spiritual direction by the white garment people saying they should not comb the child's hair and of course over the over the years hair that you've not been combing just tangles and forms into whatever and then almost all the time is not washed is not maintained is not relocked dreadlocks on the other side is intentionally locked intentionally maintained intentionally styled you can rock it anywhere I have customers that that's the only thing they rub, especially if you're a client that your hair breaks a lot and you just want to uh, allow your hair breathe, you can lock your hair. But Dada and Dreadlocks are two parallel hairstyles entirely. When it comes to children's hair maintenance, I believe that it should be minimal. They don't need anything, especially for the first five to eight years of their life it looks like most parents are always in a hurry either they want the hair to grow quickly because they are comparing their children's hair to another person's hair they want the child to look fine so they are putting wigs on the children's hair you know making adult hairstyles for them but i just believe that children's hair maintainers should be basic wash their hair with black soap you know what do do that's what we use here shea butter coconut oil palm kernel oil just basic maintenance if you're buying a good soap for your skin get a good shampoo for your hair if you're getting a good body cream get a good moisturizer for your hair too the hair should not be neglected at all our focus on weekend deal today the air all angles all perspectives <laughs> Indeed, all angles of perspective. If, you, if you're just joining us, it's all about the hair. And it is Weekend Deal coming to you from the network service of the NTA. Tell me, a lot of people say that um, what natural hair is easy. <laughs> it is not easy. We can speak from experience. Serious it experience. It takes a lot of managing for Money, it to everything. last and to look good. And the products are expensive. The products. Pro the, let's say the prices are steep. <laughs> they are steep. I agree. <laughs> okay, let's go over to the, this to NTA Port Harcourt where they are redefining hair. Let's go into the beautiful, amazing, and artificial world of weavons. The evolution of Black African hairstyles over the years is a rich and diverse narrative that reflects cultural, historical, and social changes. From traditional tribal styles to modern trends, these hairstyles have been a powerful form of self-expression and identity. Over time, they have conveyed messages of pride, resistance, and cultural heritage, showcasing the beauty and resilience of black communities. One of the earliest expressions of black hair would undoubtedly be cornrows. Commonly cited as far back as 3000 BC, cornrows symbolized status, ethnicity, wealth, and rank amongst other socio-economic spheres in Africa. Earliest records of cornrows and its derivatives can be seen in African artwork and sculptures. Arguably, the next phase that revolutionized African hair can be said to be when relaxers were introduced in the early 1900s. Hairstyles at that time, however, were inherently influenced by Eurocentric standards of beauty, sleek tresses, pompadours, and smooth waves in attempts to mimic Caucasian hair. The civil rights movement in the 1960s sparked the return of the wearing of black hair in its naturally textured state. In Nigeria, our women were being most creative with their hairstyles in woven styles and threaded updos. Variety encompassed the decade, 
This later saw Africans also embracing the Western look in a show of affluence, enlightened background, or simply exposure. The romantic era of the 1970s held fond memories like disco music and action movies. The Afro look was most popular at that time, both in men and women. In the 80s, amongst women, large hairdos, puffed up styles, and permanent waves and softer cuts typified the decade and the men also followed suit, trying to mimic the sleek look. This was the era of the big hair that was often permed to achieve the desired volume. Popular television also helped popularize the high volume buffant and glamorous image associated with it. The 90s was an era when natural beauty was more pervasive. Despite what we may call funny looking hairstyles, many still looked stunning and it is in that era that the weave on was birthed. Since entering the new millennium till date, we are seeing updated versions of earlier hairdos that lend itself to modern styling. It is strong and flattering. Women became more expressive and adventurous in style as they switched up looks with well-groomed wigs. These diverse hairstyles have evolved, adapted and continued to thrive, reflecting the ever-changing tapestry of black identity and creativity. As we look to the present and the future, we see a dynamic fusion of tradition and modernity where women and men alike proudly experiment with styles that celebrate both heritage and contemporary allure. In every curl, braid, weave or lock, these hairstyles carry a profound legacy that speaks of strength, beauty and the enduring legacy of black culture. It is true that hairstyles are dynamic. Yes. When we're younger, going to school, mm -hmm. You will make ungozi. <laughs> that thread hair thread. that used to be so painful. <laughs> my mother will be making it and I'll practically, and that's the only time my mother knows how to make. And I will cry. <laughs> I didn't cry, but I, I used cried. to wonder, uh, you know, why must it be, you know, that thread, the ungozi, then sometimes she'll put some gaps. Yes. Be gaps what are they packing? After making that long ungozi thingy. <laughs> Then they have to pack it and make it look like you tied her tie. Okay, sometimes oh, we goodness. let it down, oh. then to alternate and to give a fresh perspective <laughs> to, it. to your ungozi, <laughs> you can now pack. Why are you calling it ungozi, sir? I'm talking about... <laughs> <laughs> so let me call it Patricia or Thelma or <laughs> Patience. <laughs> I know she was going to go to Patience. <laughs> but over time, her styles have evolved. Yes, true. By the time we got to university, mm, graduated, mm, okay, yeah. we saw that um, younger children mm. even wanted to identify with fashionable hairstyles. Yeah, and true. today is something else. Mm. We have kids ourselves, girls, girls, and they don't just want you to make ungozi for oh, them. They are stylish. They pick styles. They pick colors. <laughs> <laughs> but you know we cannot overdo it. Yes, we can. That's they are why. Children. Uh, yes, yeah. that's why we talk to our guardians and parents today with this feature focused on hairstyles for minors. What hairstyles are you redefining your child's path with? Let's share this. I love you, and there is nothing you can do about it. I'm not a kid. I said I get Every child is an individual with special social, emotional, intellectual, and physical qualities as they grow from babies to minors, with possibilities of virtues, one of which is their hair care. Hair care for minors and children uh, is for you to wash their hair properly, moisturize it, for it to be soft so that you'll be able to, it will be flexible for you to style it for them. Hair care for minors and children is a good societal endeavor. It's part of socializing uh, minors and children. You know, when we talk about hair care, I know we're talking about the girls most especially. So it leads to teaching them hygiene, cleanliness, even their well-being. They like it when they see their hair looking nice and uh, neat, you know, uh, especially with current hairstyles and things like that. So it's a good thing for society. The evolution of certain practices, such as relaxing children's hair, putting on heavy attachment and overstimulating the scalp can create pressure and negative impact on the life of the child. Though we are in a socialized and digital world and everybody wants to show himself, but for minors and children, traditionally, we use um, the shampoos 
the conditioners to wash her. Even at home, you can use that. So instead of applying relax down or other things, since they are still minus, I guess you can apply those traditions. There are wools we use for children, even the beads. So you can use that for them so that it will not be too obvious because they are minors and children. It's not good to be taught for children, more especially when they are still small. It's cut the hair very well because their hair is not still strong, it's still soft. So when you apply relaxer on it, it makes the hair break. It's better you steam the hair than applying relaxer on the hair for children. The way you see people putting heavy attachment on their children, I don't put it on my children. I use only wool to make their hair. Sometimes I don't even put anything on their hair. There are ways you could you could get your 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 your, your, your child's hair to, to grow fast, not really applying a relaxer. And who said that a relaxer grows hair? Some some in fact it causes it damages the hair. Most especially like in plateau state, we have hamatan, and once it's hamatan, it 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 cuts the hair like like it, it, sometimes you just feel like you, you wake up in the morning and then you just found you can't find your hair, and you as an adult talk more of a child is not proper at all. It's a good thing, but I would like to say that it has to be age appropriate. We find that these days, a, a lot of young girls from even age two, age three are stressed. Some of the hair extensions pull their hair strands, giving them headache, making them unable to sleep. And sometimes these things need to be um, age appropriate. So you can temper when you start your children on using hair relaxers and heavy extensions. Sometimes if they feel like the, the hair is paining them too much, they won't be able to socialize and be friendly and all of those things. So it has a sociological negative effect. Also, when we begin to socialize girls into heavy makeup, heavy attachment, relaxing their hair before the appropriate age, you can find that it can lead to vices in society. Some girls, that, that's what leads to sexual abuse, gender violence. Somebody may see a young girl, but because she has this hair that is looking like older than her age, a man can mistake her and think she's old enough, law her, and those are the things that lead to societal vices. So uh, I would like to say that all of these things, good as they may be, should be steps age appropriate, even for child development. Children should learn to grow into certain things at the right time, at the right age. It is important that hair care for minors should be simple, moderate and easy to maintain. Their appearance and overall hygiene must be taken into consideration. Therefore, every basic hair care routine should be adhered to for a healthy living child. That was so difficult to watch, seeing that girl crying the way she is doing. Okay, uh, before I even continue in that thought, our first guest is in the house. He's joining the conversation. He's somebody who has been in the hair industry for so long. He's been styling women for long and has been doing a wonderful uh, job at it. Join me in welcoming to the Weekend D Studio, Amanam Asian and Sam Mo. I hope I got your name correctly. Yes, you did. Oh, Thank yes, you. I did, I did, I did. Okay, <laughs> please, what is your thought on that child crying? Do you think for children there should be a particular hairstyle or the way their hair is handled? Oh, okay. First, I'll start with um, the scalp and also the texture of the hair before the style. Now, um, as a hairstylist, you should be able to identify who has a sensitive scalp and um, the texture of the hair if it is too hot or soft enough to carry out a particular or a desirable style so most times a lot of stylists just think um, having especially children's hair weaven because of specification is the ideal way which i think is not yeah. But for example, you are making a child's hair, she starts to cry. They start crying even from the first time you put the hand <laughs> in. Ought the stylist to continue? Uh, well, it is based on the uh, parent idea and ideology because I, w I don't feel I'll be so comfortable to see my child cry over a hairstyle. 
So if you feel the pain on the child is getting too much on her, why not? You can just switch to something very simple. The hairstylist okay. should advise the parents. Yes, the parents. Mm -hmm. Some parents are too fashion forward. So they'll say it's crying, it will end. But we've seen their consequences of children being overburdened with heavy hairstyles. What would you advise parents as far as this student thing? Let's wrap up. Uh, okay, now now I advise a lot of um, parents um, to take time to study their children's texture of hair and also their scalp sensitivity um, before engaging in a particular hairstyle. Okay. That's it. Perhaps even when you're going to a salon, you should even let the stylist guide, guide you. Guide you. Yes. you take the mm -hmm. child with you whose hair is going to be made, for example, and they look and advise. That's yes. it. So it's up to you as a guardian or a parent to decide, you know, how do I marry my dear? Because much of mothers are insistent. Yes, they Personal are. experience. As a fashion, <laughs> fashion forward mothers. So you now <laughs> marry your idea with that of the stylist. It's mm -hmm. interesting. Nowadays, we see that we talked about one of our features, shared ideas on hairstyle evolution. We know that where we are today is mm -hmm. not where we even were yesterday Honestly. or last yeah. week or the month before. Mm -hmm. That even though we're having a barrage of weaves, we're also having more people swing towards wearing either dreadlocks or their natural hair. Tell us, what is really, really happening? Okay. Um, you know, having hairstyles, newly invoked hairstyles, is just um, like having the new modernized fashion. Yeah? You know, um, I think going with the trend is the in thing, right? You know, we. I grew up to know about... The thready thing mm -hmm. for hair, mm -hmm. where you have thread run round the yeah. hair, flock around. <laughs> uh, so I think time came where all that expired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then new things started coming, mm -hmm. whereby attachments were started using, um, either synthetic or human hair. Now from human hair, we've gotten an extension, which is proper donor hair, which could be used for your natural hair plating and it gives you the lushy and the direct texture that you desire. So I think fashion is a day a to day thing. It's real time. Even mm -hmm. as we're sitting and talking, it, 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 something phenomenal is happening. It's happening. Right. Apparently. Uh, do you, okay, now the trends. Uh, a lot of people want to go natural. Okay. But I think they're limited with style. I'm going to wear my natural hair. Tell us some of the things I can do to my natural hair to look good. Okay, coming to um, natural hair styling. First, you have to consider your texture. You have to consider the length of your hair. Mm -hmm. And also um, the, the standard of health. Okay. Of how healthy your natural hair is mm. before getting engaged in whatever style you desire. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay but based on the state of the hair, can, are there things you can do to build it? Yeah. Because I have a desire. I want to be trendy, mm -hmm. and I want um, a man to, do, to make me trend with my style. Even if my hair is not healthy like it really isn't, mm -hmm. <laughs> capturing it with different things over time. <laughs> but I'm looking toward, parents, uh, patients are just speaking my mind. Mm -hmm. okay. I would love to wear my hair natural. natural. Okay. Where does the journey, how do I start? So that Especially I can be with the edges. Start with the edges. Yes. Oh, we are losing our edges. Okay. We <laughs> um, are losing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the edges have, have journeyed out south. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, from the ages. Let's start from the ages. Uh -huh. Now, you know, age, age has a way of dealing with natural hair. Hmm. The more you get advanced in age, it affects your natural hair. Hmm. And also, um, child's birth could also affect your natural hair, hmm, the ages. Now, um, lastly, lack of proper hair product that corresponds with your hair texture could equally cause a lot of damage, crazy damage on oh. your hair. Wow. So these are the three things that could cause hair damage. Now, the thing is this, if you have a desire to grow your natural hair first thing if you see that your natural hair is not healthy enough it is well advised you go in for natural hair treatment okay yeah consult um 
a hairstylist or a hair consultant that knows what he or she is doing to examine your hair texture and give you the guidance on what to use on your hair to enable your hair get either growth or get healthy. That's it. Preparatory. Yeah. To yeah. Launch to the latest trend. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> okay, um, our commission continues, but we need to go to the full and knees in Nigeria now. Okay. You know that women, when we're styling our hair, Sometimes patients, you could be brushing this your lush curls, <laughs> one minute, two minutes, yeah. three. Well, it's not only you. If you see some Fulani men, oh, when they are done their hair, oh, yes. they are outstanding. Mm. So we we'll go to the cultural significance <laughs> and implications of Fulani hairstyles and wait till you see their men. Fulani are regarded as the world's largest nomadic group with a population of about 25 million people. Fulanis are quickly identified without questioning because of their unique cultural identity among other traits. The thing is, you must be distinguished in your outlook. You must be handsome, tall, lean, and with body adornment that tells who you are. Some carry very long braids with walking stick, looking well decorated with colorful attires. Their hairstyles are classified into two, that of the male and the female. They try to keep the hair as long as possible. They braid it because it is part of what we call body ad uh, adornment. It's not every category of people that do it. It's just the youth that do it, and uh, around 35 years or, or, or below. Typical Fulani settlements in Sokoto could not be reached, but picture from a book titled Nomads of Niger Republic by a French writer will be cited. This is the picture of a man with the various hairstyles. To show their cultural body adornment, the men keep long braids. When talking about Fulani men's hairstyle, Bororoji and Dusawa groups come to mind. Men should wear hairs as long as possible and they should braid it as beautifully as possible in different patterns because it is assumed that that will enhance how they look. Uh, they want to look very handsome, they want to look attractive and of course the females will prefer to see that. Some, you can see their ear here, why they will plant the head, bring it for front and keep it aside, this side. So whenever you see them, that is a bajiljo. One tends to ask what these braids mean to them. The meaning, like I said, is actually so that you become distinguished. You are picked out immediately. And for like any other person, like any other groups in society, when you meet people, you want to know that they are handsome, they are beautiful, they are pretty. The first thing they do is to look at the head downwards to the neck. And in all societies, the next thing human beings do is to look at your feet. What are you wearing? For Fulani uh, pastoralists, and especially the word I be, or what you call Bororo, uh, the thing is you must be distinguished in your outlook. With civilization, modernization, and religious beliefs, most of their way of life changes. However, some Fulani still hold their culture and identity. The original Fulbe we are talking about, if they see you in any other appearance apart from that, they will say you have been lost culturally. The settled Fulani here in Sokoto are called names like Sisawa, Torankawa and Yilabi, these groups do not carry braids, are still adopted in some parts of West Africa. Because of the weight of religion, Islam especially, it has reduced drastically. I'm from Godadawa group. We belong to the people of Sheo Osmano and Fodio. The color of our animals and those braided their hair are different. It is a tradition of Fulani, but those who have embraced Islam left it. Hair braiding amongst the Fulani men are abandoned. It is a rare sight, unless when Fulani from Niger Republic 
and other West African countries migrates into Sokoto State for festival. See me jealous of this Fulani men. <laughs> I mean, how can they look this beautiful with long hair? <laughs> and I'm here fighting for hair. Told you. Anyway, we have the expert in the house, Mr. Aishan. A lot of women come to your shop, they come to your salon. Mm -hmm. I come to your son and I want to look fab. What would you do for me? What would you advise? Are there hairstyles for some particular look? You say you have a round face, you have an oblong face. Or are there hairstyles for a particular look? Or something is trending, everybody can do it and look good. Do you advise people to do hairstyles that suit their face type or shape? Um, thank you. Coming into my salon first, I have to examine your hair. Either your natural hair or your weave, your type of weave you come with. And you know we have a lot of trendy hair, um, hair closures now. Yes. We have like the 2x2 two two closure, the 2x4, the 2x6, the 4x4, four six, the 5x5, 6x6, 7x7, 8x8. It depends on who you want to so look like. So it depends on what you come in with. And uh, also I would advise... You just don't style people's hair because you just choose to style. Style according to the first fitting. Because the essence of you styling is to give it a lift and to give it a flawless look. Hmm. So, for example, the occasion I'm going can also determine, uh, you know, there's, there's, if I want to look, I want to stand out. I want from when I'm entering from the door, <laughs> all eyes. They say most beautiful girl, woman, grandma has landed. <laughs> You know, I don't come with my weave. I tell you, I'm going for an evening occasion. I'm from the door. If I want my car packed and I light, I want the buzz to start. Okay. Personally, I'm a very stylish person. Mm, yeah. So, ah, from you your dress. Are, you Thank are. you. <laughs> so, um, before I style your hair, if you're going for an event, I'll advise to see your outfit. I style according to outfit. Oh. Because if your outfit is um, busy... I need to give you um, a very simple but classy hairstyle. Mm. So at the end of the day, you just don't get very dramatic from head down to your I start looking shoes. rowdy. <laughs> yeah. start looking like That's a clown. It. Like a cultural <laughs> dance. Yeah, so I think your outfit does a, does a, lot, of, um, a lot of telling um, to your hairstyles. Okay, we okay. said something uh, during the break about growing your edges, what can be done. Please, can you, a lot of women are watching and it's our problem, so <laughs> please talk about it. Okay, now, um, a lot of things could cause hair damages, um, like I said earlier on. Um, lack of proper hair maintenance, um, inability to um, determine the right product for your hair, um, also, the past, um, the past products could cause a lot of damage to your hair. So, I would advise if you have hair issues, either by growth, stunted hair, hair breakage, and all of that, I would advise you visit a hair stylist or a hair consultant to give you guidelines on what to do. First, is start with treatment. Okay. Yeah, because. That is what is going to give your hair the headway to development. So even be adventurous. You know that um, what we, we're seeking to hear, we have heard. But perhaps let's just get a final statement. So little matter how damaged or challenged your hair may be, irrespective of age or gender, mm -hmm. there is hope if you are consulting appropriately. Definitely. And I'm an, I'm an um, You've given hope and succor to many. Yes, Have sure. you taken bold? There's talk about pattern baldness, alopecia. Yeah, know, Have yeah. you been able to bring somebody from almost baldness to having hair growth all over? Is yes. it possible? Very possible. Wow. Okay. Very, very possible. Hmm. Is it a lengthy process? Is it an expensive process? Well, it depends on um, the body system. Yeah. Yeah, just like when you have a cut on your skin, you know, most people, it takes a lot of time to get it healed. And most people have the rapid healing, mm, right? True. So mm. it depends true. on the body system. body system. So there are some hairs you treat for three, four months, and you still start having the 
effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there are some hairs that takes a lot of time. But definitely, you see. Are there things we can eat to help us grow our hair? I mean, nutrition. Yeah, definitely. You, Talk you a little about it. Okay, now, this is it. Um, body system needs all the vital or essential um, vitamins and nutrients mm -hmm. in the system. Okay, let's talk about water. Water. You know, water plays a very vital role in the system and also your hair. So that's why you're told at all times to moisturize your hair. How do you moisturize your hair? Water and all essential products. Mm. Having water in your system, like drinking water all the time, could also enable your hair so nice one. to be healthy. Then eat healthy too. Eat it's healthy. and vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. Just like what you do for your skin and your life. Please bring water now. We want to thank you, Mr. <laughs> Manam, for coming on Weekend. Uh, thank it's you been so quite much. exciting because for many years, I've been talking to people. My edges, my hair, my length, my texture help. They quickly provide weaves. <laughs> or other things to cover, keep mm. covering. So there are many solutions to cap. Mm. There are not many. People are not willing to share ideas with more exposure of natural hair. So you've gladdened our hearts today. <laughs> and we'll you. be making further inroads into what you can do for our natural hair. We thank you thank for coming you. on thank Weekend Do. So it's, it's been exponential. <laughs> there is hope for us, ladies. Let's go there. A break back on. Don't forget that Weekend Deal is interactive. Share your ideas, your thoughts, your questions. They are experts on ground to engage you and prefer solutions. Don't go away. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, it is Weekend Deal and the focus is on hair, all perspective, all angles. The place of pop culture in our hairstyles cannot be undermined. I mean, growing up, I remember that um, there was a particular hair we used to make. They call it the Shade Adu hairstyle that was fashioned after the popular British Nigerian music icon Shade Adu. We did that a whole lot, and growing up, it's been from one star to the other. I remember recently I went to the market, and one a hair a vendor was telling me, buy this Omotella wig, and I'm like, okay, does Omotella have a hairline? But I discovered she, she told me that, no, this is some of the wigs she wears in her movie. So pop culture, celebrity, and hairstyle is something that will continue as far as we live. The next contribution will tell us more, and it's by Koho. beauty in both males and females. From infants to toddlers, children, teenagers, youths, and even the aged, the hair is a unique endowment that either when weaved, plaited, gelled, curled, extended, or barred can define personality, mood, and of course, trends. All over the world, various hairstyles stand out going beyond the ordinary and defining beauty standards as males and females often look to their idols for inspiration. When we want to see the newest hair trends and the most beautiful hairdos, we commonly look through the recent reviews on celebrities' hair stars. From A-league stars to musicians, actors, and even sportsmen, their hair stars choices are often copied by their fans who wants to show their support and love for their favorite team, player, actor, or artist? Celebrity hour remain messy. It remain messy. I can't carry a hairstyle because I have my own natural hairstyle I have as a mature person. I like this hairstyle to score it, skin it at any time. I whiskey, it, Babala, and my favorite. Now my mentor, now my everything. I feel that because of whiskey. I like the way whiskey. Create his own music. I used to play it my head, but I just lose it because of say I want to replace another star. My favorite footballer is um, Vinny from Real Madrid. What I love is hairstyle because it's a very expensive hairstyle and it's nice. I love it. But why I didn't carry hairstyle because my hair is not up to it. So as my hair is up to it, I will carry hairstyle.
While some celebrities opt for conservative stars, others are the trend setters who actively shape the direction of the trends in males and females hairstyles. Some of them amaze us in a good way, while others are rather amusing. And for others, it is love at first sight. The reason some of these celebrities are unique and can be recognized just by their hairstyles. Certain individuals who have the propensity to want to copy another person, behave like another person, talk like another person, dress like another person, based on the satisfaction, just like we used to um, understand and tell the world that every need has an ego to feed. Nobody will behave or think or express certain emotions without underlying issues. The societal implication is just to act a pointer that such society is not working within a certain acceptable norm. Just as individual, some are antisocial. So these are dynamics that we need to understand. It's a whole idol thing, you know. You, you have someone that you admire, that you are creeping about and you want to be like, like them. So you tend to walk, like, act like them, dress like them and wear the kind of thing that they wear because you want to be them. Uh, it's just the expression of love. I like this person so much, I want to be like them. Basically, uh, when I do, I do McMander and maybe, who knows, I'll be people out there who would like, I want to be like Panda too. <laughs> Celebrities are supposed to be role models. They are capable of influencing the society with what they do, whether good or bad. The people that we admire tend to have a big influence on our choices. But making a right choice when it comes to what influences us should not be so hard. You know, even when you're copying something, yes, pop culture is fly, it's good to be trending, it's good to know what's up. Especially if I regard your crowning glory, which is your hair and your head. So copy all you may, but you should be intentional and sensible. You don't just go and copy a style that may not bring out the best in you. After all, what's the essence of copying it? <laughs> if it wasn't nice on Kim Kardashian, on Jennifer Aniston, or on Patience, <laughs> would you copy it? <laughs> so copy and copyright. Copy Perhaps that's where you need a beauty consultant. Oh, yeah, girl. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, Ella Bong Robin is in the house. You know, she's the um, uh, owner and CEO of uh, Luxbox. Okay, great That's to have you. Are you cater for men and women? Yes, please. Super fantastic. From your hair, <laughs> you know, you are reiterating <laughs> what a man I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you well, know. Natural hair. <laughs> so I see you and I'm excited. Oh, thank you. You know, a man I'm gave us hope that little matter how challenged your hair yeah, has yeah, been over time, if you are intentional, it. it can be revived and then you can carry it because um, people are spending astronomical amounts on weaves and there's a place for it really when you yeah. want to glamour up all the way but it's a place for this as well i mean um with hair oftentimes what i tell my clients is just go simple okay. go easy right people people like to go over the top it's like with um skincare you hear somebody saying oh i'm spending two million naira on skincare the same thing with hair right but what people don't know is that you can get artificial hairs you can get natural hair me, I don't brag. I don't do too much with my hair, right? Like now, I losing my hair this morning. What I have here is just a spray bottle. This, what is inside here is just water. Water. Mm. And you see, if you look at it, it's not. That's all. It's just water, mm. right? So, but with, with your hair, if if I'm supposed to consult for you, I can say, okay, if you don't want just water, you want to go extra, add a little oil to it, add a little moisturizing conditioner to it, and you are good to go. Right, it's not. It's not supposed it to be that be expensive. Steep. It's or steep. Steep. It shouldn't be. Hey, it's simple. Or hey, the cost classy. doesn't determine the outcome. No, we can no. spend affordable sums and still come out looking good. Honestly, oh. okay. Let's see you just do something to this hair because right now we are looking at the face. Uh, so I can just do it. You, you know, so like when I talk about simplicity, right? Yeah. But when it comes to hair, like I've heard so many reports that like we've had today, mm. you know, but with hair, there's some, so many things I want to touch on. 
For example, let's mm. say your wig now. There's okay. so many women that say, oh, I like to wear wigs. I like to wear wigs because uh, hair is difficult. Hair is that one. But what people don't know is that hair itself, wig itself can damage your hairlines if you are wow. not careful. Right? So if you wear wig every time, anybody who wears, check your front hair. It's going to chip because of the elastic behind mm. it. Do you see? So what I advise is before you wear any wig, apart from the wig cap you use, mm. you moisturize your front hair. Oh, nice. Do you understand? When I'm talking about moisturizing, I don't mean pack products and put. No, I'm not interested. A little bit, peanut size. Just the front hair, massage it in. Okay. Right? You moisturize with like shea <coughs> butter? No, shea butter is not for moisturizing. Okay. Oh, okay. Really? Yes. Shea I'm hearing this for the first time because it's a shea, because shea every time you go to the salon, that's the first thing they put what after is shea washing. Shea butter, girl. No. Tell us. Shea butter, the, it's oil based. Yes. It's like if you. Oh, I wish I. I wish I came. Okay. Yeah. So what is the essence? Moisturizer. For hair? Moisturizer mm. is like. Um, oh, I wish Do I. Do we came. have natural moisturizers? Apart from mm. water. Apart from water, no. So they are often purchased. So different products have different ingredients in mm. them. So we're coming to that. The ingredients you use, the products you use, mm. depends on your hair type and your hair porosity. Mm. If your hair has high porosity or low porosity, that determines what to use. What you and use. if your hair is soft and your hair is strong. So that my hair is soft, you use. for mm. example. Mm. My hair is soft, for example. Mm. Hair itself is made of keratin. Keratin is protein right i can't go and buy products that make my hair softer okay do you see three of us can be here we have different hair textures, textures. and when i go to the market i can't buy we all cannot use the same product so you need to know exactly what your hair needs and the products to get for it that is one thing people should know so let me say for example if your hair is strong do you understand? You can't buy hair that makes your hair stronger. Hair um, products like mm. keratin. Mm. Keratin is going to make it stronger. You need moisturizing products, water-based products yes, that will soften water -based it. Products. Do you understand? So now when people say, oh, water-based, 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 glycerin also helps the hair. So when you look at, let's say this is a product container, you look at the product. The first thing, what you, how you know what the base of the product is, is the first ingredient there. If you see glycerin or you see water, then it's good. Do you mm. see? Because with glycerin, let's, let's, do, let's do a typical example. Let's say I carry a nylon, mm. nylon bag, mm. anything, and cover my hair and leave it for some hours. And I remove it. You would see vapor on yes, it. nylon, yeah. right? That means naturally, as you move about daily, moisture, moisture is leaving your hair. Right? Glycerin helps to trap to the, lock moisture, in the moisture, to lock it in. Right? So these are the little things that people don't understand about hair. Can I ask that you keeps something? <laughs> what is shea butter for? Because they so, put it every time so, when you come. <laughs> After all said and done, so for, shea butter must touch for it hair at some treatments, point. Right? There's something mm. we call LOC. Mm. There's something we call LCO. Mm. LOC is leave-in conditioner, oils, and creams. Hmm. LCO is leave-in conditioners, creams, and oils. Okay. So there are like five categories. You can mix them anyhow. Shea butter is under C. Creams. Hmm. Do you understand? There is oil. There is cream. There is leave-in conditioner for the okay. hair. So for example, I go to a salon that knows hair. Hmm. And this is not restricted to natural hair or relaxed oh, hair. Relaxed. No. Right, you can still have healthy, relaxed hair. Okay, do you understand? We ask you to hold that thought. <laughs> We're coming back. We're coming back mm. as we get to the nitty gritty. Mm. This should be a course taught in schools, <laughs> so that many of the mistakes we made on our hairs, we won't have made them if we had known some yeah. of them. Well, uh, Koho been doing some research, and um, we got to learn from what he found that some people that handle hair describe themselves as artists, and your hair as a work of art. Koho, what else did you find? In the world of beauty, hair is not just hair. It's an artist's canvas, a story waiting to be told. For some, hair is more than just a crown. It's an opportunity for self-expression and a way to stand out from the crowd. Meet the stylist who will transform hair into living works of art, pushing the boundaries of creativity. 
what it takes to be in the industry, you have to be very artistic. Beyond normal plating hair, so it's all, it's all about artistic and the modernity, because the hair has gone beyond the, um, uh, beyond the, what we used to know in those days. Then what it takes what it takes to be in the industry, one the desire, the aspiration, then the passion for it. If you wake up in the morning, you want to look good, and you know just look good. You come to the salon, you have your hair cords. You come to the spa, you make up your, your pedicure and manicure, you do your facials. As you can see, I'm looking like a, a 25 years old man. But I, if I tell you my years, you'll be shocked. But I always look young because of the industry I am into. Sometimes some people they might come to barber shop and they don't even know what they actually want for their hair. Because some of them, they will just give you their hair, okay, you are, you are a barber, so do what you feel is good for me. You know, so based on we as artists, we look the hair, we don't think on how to do or what to do on the hair. So sometimes when you, some people, because some people with hair shape, they are not the same. We have different, different type of hair shapes. So some people, you, know, you look their, even their front hair, some of them, their hair are already chopped for other size, and you know, some have bent hair. So but based on our work and how we know how to do it, we now calculate ourselves how I want to do it, then you now now is a head of way. As a barber, a skilled barber, is an artist who weave together a range of technical and soft skills to create a personal grooming experience that caters to the unique need and preference of each client. At the heart of a barber, skill sets like technical ability honed over years of practical and refinement. From the backbone of barbing, ranging from the classic styles to more temporary looks. Each cut is the delicate dance of precession. As the barber analyzes the client's hair, face shape and personal style to create a costume look that flatters their futures. If you want to do your wedding, you want to look good, you come and do your, your barbing, you come and do your facials, so that at least when you come out, People will say, wow, you're looking good. And we, in fact, we make people look good. Okay. That is why I use Abuja Hair Doctor, because I like that name. That's why everything about me is different. How I pose, how I do my things is different, obviously. So we try as much as possible to give our client the best. Yes, you know, it's our business. You cannot be rude and you want people to be around you. It's not possible. Or some people they don't like when somebody is looking down on them or talking to them anyhow. So be respectful, be hardworking, and mostly know your job. That is the most important thing, know your job very well. Somebody can be into hair and beauty industry for five years without being able to do the right thing. Why some people are in the industry for just a year, if you see what they can do with their hands when it comes to hair making, then you see the difference. So it takes passion and determination. Every hair has a storyline. So that's why it's not just easy for anyone to come into hair and beauty industry and say, oh, I know how to do it, I just have to. It goes beyond what we are seeing today. In a world where hair becomes art, these stylists are the architects of self-expression. Through their vision, creativity and skill, they carve and weave in every strand. The next time you visit a salon, engage your stylist so your hair can always reflect the masterpiece that you are. Okay, that was from Koho. The other report on celebrity hair was actually from NTA Lagos. So hair indeed is an art, and we have a hair artist still sitting with us here. So we'll go directly to Emma Bong. So what is the most crazy hairstyle you've ever done on somebody? Okay, <laughs> unfortunately, for, fortunately or unfortunately for my clients, I don't risk their hair because okay. I love hair. Mm. I went into the business because I love, I'm passionate about hair. So if you come to me and tell me I want to do this, I first of all call you to the side. I'm like, are you okay? <laughs> because I need to know, is there, is there a problem? <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's start from there. Mm. You know, so it took me, even the, the, for me, um, I beg to disagree. Mm -hmm. One of the craziest hairstyles I have seen, the trend, is frontal. 
the reason is because people have abused it. Frontal is supposed to be something you do occasionally, mm. Mm. right? It's not an every week hair mm. because of the glue. I fix it for clients. I do it for brides, but I don't advise. I mean, you want to go to an office, you want to, you're a regular person and you're fixing frontal every week because you love it. It's damaging your front hair. And you know, like it or not, as a woman, there will come a day when you just want to leave your hair out. Do you the understand? time has come. You don't, nobody wants that patch that the, the glue causes the chemicals. The process of doing frontal, you, you do frontals. For you to make it last longer, you put, first of all, you clean it. Mm -hmm. As you are cleaning the mentholated spirit, you are wiping your skin of nutrients. If you do facials, if you do face products, you have cleaned the nutrients off of that place because you need the base mm. as clean as possible, uh -huh. right? Then you go ahead to apply the first layer of the glue. You apply the second layer of the glue. In most cases, you apply the third layer of the glue. And then you come and you trim and you do all that. And then you apply a melting spray. What is the That's a problem weave. That's for you just weave. laid front and so scary. <laughs> but yeah, that is the wigs. truth. She just but sometimes me. you can do wigs. There are wigs with frontal. Yes, they are frontal wigs. I'm talking about the one they install. When you yeah, get yeah, someone say, I just installed my frontal. frontal. The lay. process is mm. that is. That is the process, right? And it is scary. Let us not lie to ourselves. Okay, so I was thinking of something. Wigs yeah. are so expensive. We hear Bone Straight going for almost. Tell me. We have heard of 1.3 million, 1.5 yeah, million. That, that shit is good. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff is good. Sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah. You okay. know, we've gone from Peruvian, the yes, other trendy mm, hairstyles. Are that. those ones now insignificant? Uh, yeah. Must it be Bone Straight? So the problem is people mix up hairs, right? L let me put a little education out there. When you say bone straight, when you say hair, hair have the, we have what you have is raw hair, donor hair. You have the is it, um what the uh, is it virgin hair, whatever they call okay. it. When I say mm. raw hair, so you go to an Oyibo person, the people who supposedly have this hair is good. When you cut it from the person's head, mm -hmm. like let's say you cut my hair. You secure it and you cut it. Hmm. And I sell to you. That is raw hair. Wow. You yeah. understand? That's the first case. That's the most expensive category. Like, mm. raw, don't know hair. Like, you know who, like, you, this one is from one person's head. Okay. Right? There's the next category where you sort, let's say three of us have the same hair type. Mm. Okay. Right? So they can cut your own, your own, your own, and join it together. And you have another hair. And mix. It's still good quality. Mm. Okay. Right, but it's not as good as the first the one. raw hair category. Okay. Juicy. So then you have another category where um hundred people, different hairs is mixed. Mm. They now sort it out. When I say different hair, I don't mean the bad hairs now. Mm. I mean the good stuff yeah. still. Mm. But it's not sorted per maybe at three people, no, four no, people, no. five Just people, okay. hundred people, yeah. right? It's now sorted per type, per texture. They are still good quality. So you see that. As we progress now, we have different qualities of hair, which affects the price. Okay. This is a fact. Now, there are hairs that the shafts, right? Mm. When you hear Brazilian and all those, all those names, they are the shafts that the same factories that have gathered this hair, you're not going to trash the other ones now, mm. right? So they pick those shafts, sort it out as well, and still make hair for it. So it's giving you a cheaper category, mm. right? There is even the ones that is now mixed with rubber. They now call it hair blend. Okay. Oh, okay. Do you see? That one is not natural anymore. No, because mm. it's mixed. It's mixed. Right? Mm. And, and the truth is, the moment you cut hair from someone's head, mm. it's like even hair on your head, you are treating it. Mm. You are taking water. You are maintaining it. How about you cutting it? The moment you cut it, you have cut the source of its protein. Yes, the nutrition. Right? Yeah. So you need to put back the nutrition. But yeah. now, how the hairs accept products, how the hairs accept this nutrition is based on how it was harvested. Hmm. This is, this is, this is deep. So this is too organic deep. for my liking. This is <laughs> juicy. So hair is that deep, right? So okay. somebody brings, somebody now brings maybe like the fourth category of the hair. And says, oh, come and change the color to gold. Come and change the color to white. And you expect it to last for you. 
Mm. They were meant to start putting chemicals on that tear. But it's please, before you go, <laughs> then one you take from one donor. Mm. Yeah. It still, has to, it still has to be treated, doesn't it? So they don't treat it as much because it's one person. So they check it for lice, mm. like for, you know, fungi and everything. But mostly they use vinegar, apple cider to wash it. They do it before it is sold they and comes to us. They use it in the us. most natural way. Okay. You understand? They don't apply so much chemicals to but it. But what ought we to do now? When we get these weaves now, what is the best way to maintain them? Exactly. As so we wrap up our conversation. If your vendor is telling you the truth, about the type of hair you are buying, mm. right? That's the first step, sir. That is the first step. Know what you're buying. They will not know if it's some vendors will go and pick the fourth category mm. of hair and mm. come and give to you and tell you the second category because mm. anybody that knows hair, that first category, like lie, you will know. You understand? Mm. So when you go to treat, when you and what I advise my clients is when you buy a new hair before you use it on your head, you must wash it. People think I'm lying. People just buy hair and use. Okay. You must wash because first of all, the, most people have used silicone to seal the you know, shaft of the hair, use different products. Some of these products irritate the skin. Mm. Ah. Some of, yes, some of people are allergic to the products used. So you have to wash any hair you are installing, new hair. The first thing you do okay. is you must wash it. Right, strip it of the, the chemicals that you don't know about, and sometimes okay. what you see is dirty. Okay, ah. tell me, let's yeah. go back to Ungozi. Let's mm. go back to Ungozi. <laughs> I said, I'm, I said, I'm, I'm very going natural. Back to I'm going to treat I like very, I like your natural hair. Yeah, I, I love it. It's something I'll comfortably ah, wear, <laughs> but the confidence I'm lacking now, it is not looking like yours. And with the talk with the manam, and now with you, you huh. it's our hope that Ungozi, many of our more of our hairs will look like this. See the funny thing about us, um, patients. Mm. Our hairs were getting damaged. Mm. Rather than getting it to the point where this is, mm. we were covering it the more, yes. fixing more things, no, and using methods and appliances we hardly understood. Good a thing we have learned from you both. Oh, so, women, today. let your hair breathe. They are going to be watered and moisturized so the right thing, way let henceforth. Me, let, me, let me see if I can mm. train a bit of education. Mm. It's mm. heat. Mm. Heat, mm -hmm. H E A T, mm. heat. Mm. So, most people don't understand that heat damages their hair natural oh. hair natural hair relaxed hair, hair. Okay. heat actually damages the hair okay. excess heat so what i advise is in your house let's say you do your hair by yourself because oh. not everybody that has time to go to the salon right if you look at your straightener or the first thing is you always have to use heat protectant it's a generic name for heat protectant. They have different brands, Cantu, Tresemme. You use it whatever. daily or when you're fixing the stuff? Whenever style. you're using heat on your hair, okay. use heat protectant. Okay. And then check the temperature. All the appliances have numbers on them. Mm -hmm. The numbers on these things are not there for a joke. Okay. So you have some, you have 70 degrees, mm. you have up to 220 degrees, you have some up to 480 degrees right so some people will be like okay i'll use 480 degrees because i want to do it sharp sharp you're damaging your hair because the heat protectant itself each one let's say this is a heat protectant mm. if you look at the container it has the level of heat it can take it can take so let's say this one is for 220 degrees mm. and then you go and put your machine at 480 degrees you've made this invalid right mm. so you start damaging your hair gradually so when people are saying oh i'm on relax i don't have anything to bother about i'm on natural hair you still have to you must still conscious. apply wisdom and have yes. the appropriate knowledge yes we want to thank you yes. obviously there's a lot we need to learn that's why we hear that we have hair consultants and perhaps um Enobong, you are a hair consultant? Yes, I oh, do. Oh, interesting. Do but we know that when patients and I come to you, yeah, so. you will treat us with love. Yeah. yeah. So. Tell you when, it, when it regards finance. Price. Don't be calling big English. <laughs> treat us with <laughs> love. <laughs> Reduce the price for us. <laughs> because we are, we are public servants. We are serving the nation. Thank you, Enobong Robin, Thank for coming you. on Weekend Deal. Thank it's been a pleasure so. learning from you. And the learning continues. Um, a break beckons now, Weekend. The patients, any messages? Okay, no. Just women asking about their edges and edges and edges, the same thing you've talked about. So if you've heard her, let's moisturize and keep the hair. Yeah.
Well, I, I think I, I was pushed to like open a new Facebook page, mm -hmm. and not Bong Robin page. Mm -hmm. If they can just go there and send me a message, just okay, follow so, yeah, me. Follow answer her, the follow I'll her. just take maybe some hours today and answer a lot of oh, their questions. There are too many questions yeah. on the edges here. Yeah. Oh, Let them right. just forward it there. Okay. Follow and me. Robin, you're and Bong Robin page on Facebook. Okay. Follow me and okay. ask. So just shoot Any your question, yeah, and, I'll, and I'll answer as many as I can. Thank because you, we don't have to hold it. Thank you so much, everybody. Back on on weekend deal. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Over time, many of us have um, um, covered our hair or taken um, unconventional methods to uh, make us look more glamorous, make us look more attractive. Mm. And we're learning today that um, there's another path mm. to progress, especially if you want to grow your natural okay, hair. Yeah. There's more tomorrow, though. I'll be talking, exploring <laughs> this very interesting avenue about your hair and the place it positions itself in your daily outlook. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye. It continues tomorrow. God bless Nigeria. God bless Nigeria. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>